The word trust in these particular passages of Scripture, and it's the word that's most commonly used in the Old Testament for this, it's a word that the, the, it would be, you could translate it, a bold, sure confidence. Now you need to write that down, or you need to do whatever it is you need to do to, to hang on to this. A bold, sure confidence. Have you ever been around somebody, they've got a loved one in the hospital. That loved one's gotten a bad report. And you get around the family and they say this, well, we're just, we're just trusting in the Lord. No, you're not. See, oftentimes, we think that we're operating in a position of godliness when in fact, we're operating from a position of Tradition and cliches. There is no power in, as a matter of fact, Jesus pointedly in Mark chapter 7 said, Your traditions and doctrines of men make the word of God of no effect, or literally, you make the word of God void of its power. You take the power out of the word. And so what happens is Christianity has developed its own CB talk. And, and oftentimes we're actually quoting Shakespeare or Benjamin Franklin instead of the Bible. Have you ever, have you ever heard anybody do this? Well, you know, we've just... We just believe, and we're just going to step out in blind faith. Okay, I want to help you with something. Faith is never blind. We just took a step of blind faith. No, you didn't. Faith always sees the outcome that's desired. Always. Remember Jairus? Jairus came to Jesus, met him when he stepped off the boat. Master, could you come to my house? My little girl is sick. Is Jairus operating in faith? Yes. By the way, Jairus is Jesus' is pastor. Jairus was the ruler of the synagogue in Capernaum. Jesus lived in Capernaum. Jesus went to church. We, we, we see in the Bible, we just read it a few weeks ago, on the year of Jubilee, he stood up for to read, as was his custom. Jesus, isn't it, doesn't it make you feel good that Jesus had a custom? He went to church regularly. Well, you know he'd been at Capernaum. I mean, when he, was, when he was in town, he went to his local church at Capernaum. Jairus was the ruler of the synagogue. He was his pastor. Jairus says, I, I need you to come to my house. My little girl's sick. She's really sick. I need your help. So they go. And then we had the woman with the issue of blood. That's another example of faith. She had heard of Jesus. She said in her heart, if I can but touch the hem of His garment, I'll be made whole. And she came up, she put action to it, grabbed the hold to the hem of His garment, and immediately Jesus felt power leave Him. And He turned around and said, Who touched me? And the disciples said, Master, the crowd is thronging you. Nathaniel's gotten knocked down twice. We're not sure where Thomas is. And you say, who? he said, no, no, no. Somebody touched me for I felt virtue or power go out of me. Do you know Jesus didn't pray for that woman? Jesus didn't turn to that woman and say, because I am the Son of God, you have been healed this day. You know what Jesus had to do with that healing? Nothing. And he said so. He turned to the woman, and she, fearing and trembling, <laughs> told everything that had happened to her. Now, 
Let me share something with you. Women haven't changed in 2,000 years. She told everything. She had been going to doctors for 18 years. She told Jesus about every one of them. And she told him about how they couldn't help him. And then she was talking to her friend Gladys, and Gladys said to go see this one. And then, and then Francis said, I was watching TV the other night. They had this info march along. You need to go see this. And so, and she's going through this whole deal, telling everything. That, and I tell you what, I went in to see this one doctor, and I told him, I've got a cookie sheet older than you. What in the world? I mean, she, she just, she, so she tells him the whole thing. And she took so long that someone comes up to Jairus and says, there's no need to trouble the master any longer. Your little girl is dead. Can you imagine how that hit him? Can you imagine how mad he could have been at the woman with the issue of blood? Matter of fact, most people I know... See, people are notorious for passing blame to other people instead of taking responsibility. Can I share something with you? You will go a lot farther in life if you assume responsibility for your actions. It's not other people's fault. It's not other people's fault when they do bad things to you because you have the choice of how you react to it. And the way that you react to it will determine your outcome, not their action against you. So he could have very easily said, Woman, you haven't been to church in 18 years and you've taken up all this time and now my little girl is, die, is dead. He didn't do that. And Jesus caught him very quickly. When the man came up and said, your little girl is dead, Jesus said, fear not. Look, look at me. Look at me. Fear, don't be afraid. Only believe. 